It's not what other people say is valuable. It's how we value ourselves. Some of us, we've been trained not to cross that line, not to open that box, not to walk out of that cage, not to walk out of the prison in our minds. When God is like, I set you free, but we still believe we belong where we've been. Our lives are so much more than what meets the eye. All of us have a purpose. All of us have a stage in a sense and where we are able to command the spotlight when we walk in who we were called to be. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Confidence Restored podcast presented by CC America, also known as Confidence Centers of America and hosted by Tamaria Jordan. This is a show designed to help you build your confidence, increase your faith and get mentally fit to overcome any trials and tribulations you may encounter. Through personal testimonies of faith, inspiration, and transformation, Tamaria and guests seek to inspire and uplift you. This message is delivered by us, CCing you on lessons learned in hopes of encouraging you regardless of where you are in life. Enjoy the show. Welcome to a live taping of the Confidence Restored podcast. I am your host, Tamaria Jordan, and today's episode is titled, made for the stage, not a cage. And many of you may be thinking, what in the world is she talking about? So it was laid on my spirit, I would say yesterday, but today the message really started to become clear to me, you know, with regard to what I was going to talk about. Initially, when I thought about this topic, I was thinking specifically about acting, theater, finding your life's purpose, But as I really started to think about it, I thought about how many of us have been boxed in by life situations, by others' opinions, by their self-limiting beliefs that they have about themselves that they've then projected onto others. So really realizing that our lives are so much more than what meets the eye. All of us have a purpose. All of us have a stage in a sense and where we are able to command the spotlight when we walk in who we were called to be. And so as I started to think about this, I thought about how many people may feel confined to what other people say about you, how other people say you should act, what other people say you should do. And so I just wanted to encourage someone today that you do not have to be confined by others' limitations. The limitations that we set oftentimes can be based on things that we've heard or projections from others regarding what they believe to be true for themselves or what they may doubt in terms of what can be achieved. So the title was changed to Confidence Restored because it reminds us in Hebrews that if we do not throw away our confidence, it will be richly rewarded. And many of us have thrown away our confidence. We've allowed our confidence to, con- to be confined, much like that cage. And so when you think about a cage, a cage really does confine you to a certain space. It says you cannot color outside of the lines. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. You can or cannot achieve X, Y, or Z. Whereas a stage refines. And so that made me look up the definition of stage. And in fact, one definition of the word stage is a point, period, or step in a process or development. And when you think about a stage, oftentimes it is a place where individuals are in the spotlight or they're in the limelight. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. But it's a place to illuminate a play, a theatrical production, or whatever it is, a dance performance, it's really there so that things will be more pronounced, they will stand out. And so as I think about a stage, it is not just for a performance, but when I looked at the the true definition of it, I thought it was interesting that it mentioned a point, a period, or a step in a process or development. And when you think about staging something, people stage houses, they put things in a certain place to make it look a certain way in order to attract buyers. Well, when we think about why God wants us to share our testimony, why he wants us to essentially be on a stage to proclaim who the son is, 
letting people know that Jesus died for our sins and that we can have everlasting life, that we don't have to be confined to the lives of the enemy or to whatever box people try to put us in. We don't have to be confined to our past mistakes, whereas some people will make you live in your past, but you have a choice. You don't have to live there. I remember recording a TikTok and I said, God already set me free. I won't let you hold me. And that goes for any person, any situation, and most definitely the enemy and those individuals he may send or those situations he may send to try to get us down. And so when I thought about that, I said, wow, this is a lot deeper than what I thought because confining something is so much bigger. And so when we think about a cage, oftentimes we may think of an animal. Um, a definition of a cage is a box or enclosure having some open work for confi- confining or carrying animals such as birds. It could also be defined as a barred cell for confining prisoners, a fenced area for prisoners of war. Some of us are prisoners of war, the war meaning our lives. Our lives have become a war zone for all the past hurts, the rejection, the trials, the tribulations, the things that we go through. We've become confined to those situations, but we don't have to be defined by those situations. Confined and defined are two different things. And some of us define who we are by our past condition. It's like the woman in the Bible with the issue of blood. She was defined by her past situation. But when she was delivered from that, People still remembered that she was the woman with the issue of blood. They never mentioned her name, but they said she was the woman with the issue of blood. Many of us are the people with the issue, but we've allowed other people. And sometimes we have defined for ourselves that that is who we are. Who we are is not always necessarily what we do. Because all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. We all make mistakes. We're not perfect. At the same time, again, that doesn't give us license to go out here and act reckless, but at the same time, realizing that God put us on this earth for a purpose. He put us on this earth for us to shine in who he called us to be. And that doesn't mean taking the limelight from him. That means allowing our lives to be a living testimony for him. So in Matthew 5, verse 16, it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. I know that my life is a testimony. The situations that I've survived, the things that I've seen, the things that I am living, the things I have lived, I know that it is a testimony to help someone else. And so when I think about testimony, when we look at Revelation, I was reading Revelation 12 and in verse 10, it says, and then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. So in that scripture, it reminds us that the enemy was sent down to earth. And we know that he's here with all the things that are happening, the wars, the trauma, the murders, just so many different things that are happening in this world where people feel lost. They feel like they don't have any hope. But again, the word reminds us to not throw away our confidence. Confidence meaning our faith, our hope. And When you think about that scripture, we know that the enemy is here. That's clear. It is very clear that the enemy is here. But what's also clear is the fact that God is still all powerful, still all knowing, still omnipresent. He is everywhere. His angels are here with us. He gave us the Holy Spirit, which is the comforter to help us in times of trial and tribulation. And what I thought stood out is verse 11, the fact that it says, They triumphed over him. They, meaning our brothers and sisters, because it says he's an accuser of our brothers and sisters. When you think about it, he accuses us. He reminds us of the things that we did in the past. He reminds us of the things we did a few hours ago. He reminds us and continues to keep our life in a cycle of condemnation because we can never measure up. We can never do enough to 
essentially please God or show him that we're serious. And some of us think that by our works, we are defined and also by our works that we are saved. But the word tells us the only way that we can be saved is to believe and confess that Jesus is Lord. And that is by grace that we are saved, not by our works. Now, faith without works is dead. So that means we do have to move our feet. We can't just stand back and ask God to deliver us, do this and do that without taking action. But at the same time, we have to remember that we are only saved by grace. But our testimonies will help us overcome the enemy, the accuser. So we know that he's here. We know that the enemy's time is short. And so when we think about life situations, we think about those individuals who might be walking in darkness. They also know their time is short. So those demons, those spirits, because the word reminds us we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against spirits and principalities and rulers of darkness. And so we are fighting against these evil spirits and we think we're fighting against our neighbor, our spouse, our friend, our parents. The truth is we're fighting that spirit. And guess what? Darkness cannot hide from light. No matter where it is, light will illuminate. And so when you think about a stage, we are in the limelight. So I looked up the definition of limelight, which is a stage lighting instrument producing illumination by means of a oxyhydrogen flame directed on a cylinder of lime and usually equipped with the lens to concentrate the light in a beam. And so that light is concentrated. That white light, that spotlight, when you look at the British definition of limelight, that spotlight is on you. That spotlight of where are you in your life? What have you achieved? What have you done? What will you do? You are not confined to the limitations of what other people, the box that they may put you in. You can define your life for yourself. And the reason this is such an important message for me is that Many times in my life, I found myself in situations where I was defined or confined by others' limited beliefs and thought systems. I started to take on what they believe. So you think about the slave uh, mentality. If someone has been a slave long enough, they will start to believe that they belong there. There uh, was a letter called the Willie Lynch letter. And in there, it talks about how you make a slave. You break them down mentally to make them believe that they deserve the treatment that they're getting. You break them down mentally so that they don't realize that there are more of them than there are slave masters. And even in Exodus, it said that essentially they wanted the, they wanted the Israelites to believe that they could not escape. They wanted them to think that they had to remain in captivity. The funny thing is there were more Israelites than there were Egyptians. But because of their mentality, they had been in slavery for so long, 400 years, that when they got free, they still had a slavery mindset that they wandered around in the wilderness. And the enemy continued to chase them. And that's actually what ended up destroying the enemy, meaning the Egyptians. But essentially, when you look at the book of Exodus and it's talking about the liberation of the people of Israel, it's interesting to see how some of them even wanted to go back to slavery when they were so close to the promised land. Some of us are so close to our promised land, but we have been indoctrinated in slavery, a slavery mindset to where we've been confined to believe that we belong where we've been. You don't belong where you've been. That's just, it's in the past. And I love the um, the quote where they talk about focusing on what's in your, the reason that we have the one rear window as opposed to the front window. When you think about your car, you have the front window, you have the side mirrors, so you can keep moving forward. But we only have one window in the rear. And there's that one mirror the rear view mirror where we can see out of that window and that's it. But that's because our gaze is to be ahead, not behind. And some of us, because we have been in that mindset, you think about the, the people of Israel where they literally were in slavery for so long, for all those years that their mindsets were held captive. Their mindsets were 
caged, essentially, to where they believe that they belong there, much like in that Willie Lynch letter, Willie Lynch letter, excuse me, when they talked about the making of a slave. It is to break them down, to make them think this is all you will ever be. This is all you are worth. And I said in the latest episode that um, when you think about your worth, it's not what other people say is valuable. It's how we value ourselves. Just because they don't see your worth, it doesn't mean you are not valuable. And oftentimes, the reason people do want to keep you confined to a certain place or in a certain area is because it benefits them. You think about slavery it was an economic machine. It benefited the masters. And slavery has been present throughout history in different forms and with different groups of individuals. But when you think about the mindset of a slave, the goal of the master is to make you believe you belong where you are. Because otherwise, if you were liberated in your thinking, then you would know that there could be so much more for you. And so even when we think about, say, for instance, our pets, another analogy with regard to a stage versus a cage, when you think about our pets, if a dog goes to an electric fence enough, the dog will become trained to know I better not cross that line because if I do, I'm going to get shot. Well, some of us, we've been trained not to cross that line, not to open that box, not to walk out of that cage, not to walk out of the prison in our minds. When God is like, I set you free, but we still believe we belong where we've been. And again, I'll go back to something I said in the very beginning, a stage refines. It is a process of development. When you go on stage, you have to practice. And one of the things that I, I did a long time ago was acting, and hopefully I can get back into it. But we had to prepare. We had to go through a process of developing our character, developing who we are. When we think about life, life is developing our character. We're in constant character development to highlight who we are. And when you think about character development, it's really trying to figure out how do you bring forth that character on the stage? How do you get on stage and make people believe that you are that character? How do you get on stage? And even though you see all these people around looking at you, you don't break that fourth wall. The fourth wall being the one right in front of you. The fourth wall being the, the, the shield between you and the audience so you can stay in character. Many of us, instead of thinking about the limelight in our life as a stage where we're able to share our testimonies, we're able to shine our light. We're not dimming ourselves just because others don't see our worth. Many of us are standing on the stage, but we're afraid to even act. We are afraid to act. We're afraid to bring forth that character that we've been developing. That character has been developed through life situations, through life lessons, through experiences, through setbacks, through failures. We have been in character development all along, but some of us are afraid to really let that character come out on the stage. We're walking on the stage in a box. We're thinking, wait a minute, I can't do this. I can't be that. I can't go there. I can't say this or I can't say that. Why? Not because we can't, it's because we believe we can't. And so for anyone that is struggling right now with your identity, because you are allowing the world to tell you who you are, I just want you to be reminded of who God says you are. Spend some time in the word, spend some time really getting to know yourself, getting to know who God wants you to be, building up that confidence to walk in your calling. I know for me, I wasn't meant to sit back in the background. I was meant to take center stage. But for so long, I allowed others limiting beliefs to keep me in the background. And another thing that I've done in the past, which I realized later on why people do what they do, I honestly thought for a period of time, the reason that I wasn't getting promoted or the reason that certain things weren't happening was because I wasn't ready. The truth is the person holding the power knew that I was ready, but they needed me more. So they had to keep me in a place. 
they had to literally keep me in a place where I did not think that I could be better. I had to stay in a place where I made them look good, but I was not walking in my true calling. I was walking behind the scenes. And don't get me wrong, many of us have different roles to play. Like the Bible talks about that there's different branches. We all have a role to play, but the key is knowing your role and walking in your lane, walking in your power, walking in your authentic self and your authentic truth. Because you too, even though our stages may be different, you were made for the stage that you were created to be on. Your character is being developed for that play that only you can be the star in. It might be a one-person monologue, (laughs) but that play, that limelight, that spotlight is for you to walk in your authentic truth. All of us have different life experiences. All of us have different upbringings. All of us have different things that we bring to the table. But we have to know that we belong at that table. And oftentimes it's the table that we may have to build. Sometimes we're trying to fit into a box because we're trying to go to someone else's table. And there's a reason why you feel like you are caged and you are confined because you don't belong there. You don't belong there. God set you apart. Yet you're trying to attach yourself to something you were never meant to be attached to. And once you realize that you were designed to be free, free thinking, a free spirit. You were designed to have your own uh, mind. Even God doesn't force us to believe in him. He doesn't force us to believe in his son. He doesn't force himself on us, yet we force ourselves on others. And we expect that everyone will accept us, but the truth of the matter is they won't. And that's okay. Find the people that are for you. Not everyone is going to agree with everything you do. I know for sure not everyone is going to agree with everything I do and or say. And that is absolutely okay because everyone is entitled to have their own perspective, their own views, because our lives are different. And that was a lesson I had to learn too. Even if I'm trying to help people, if they don't want my help, that is their right. And maybe that person is supposed to go through a particular season so that they can learn a lesson because, again, they are in character development. Everything builds our character. When you think about waiting, it builds our patience. And it also, in many cases, helps us persevere when we deal with difficulties. Some of us come out better dealing with difficulties than we do with triumphs. Why? Because the difficulty made us stronger. It's like muscles. When we work our muscles, it hurts. But we keep pushing through. And those additional reps, when we start to feel the burn, is when we start to see the change. So some of you just need to feel the burn. The burn hurts. But if you think about fire, you think about gold is purified in fire. Diamonds are made under pressure. You, my friend, are a diamond. You are golden. You are golden to God. You may not be golden to other people, but you are golden to God. So yes, walk on that stage, own that stage, shine your light and let them know why you are here. God put you here for a purpose. Never let other people confine you to a box that you were not meant to fit in. And I also posted on social media recently, and I had mentioned a quote from the latest episode, episode 69, Restoring Confidence After Rejection. Some of you were sent here to this earth to break the mold, yet you're trying to fit into a mold that you weren't meant to fit in. You were sent here to break it, but you're trying to squeeze into that mold that's way too small for you. It's like trying to walk around in shoes that don't don't fit. They're not made for you, so it's going to make it hard for you to walk. So I encourage anyone today, no matter where you are in your life, walk in your purpose, walk in your truth. Everyone will have an opinion about what you should do, how you should do it, but only you can truly say what feels good for you, what makes sense for you, and we all have God-given talents that we've been given. So I know for me, when I finish my race, I want God to say, well done. And like I said, I know I'm not perfect. I know I make mistakes, but I also trust that I am a part of God's master plan and he's working on me. So I'm focused on the master's plan for my life. 
and how I can show up as my true authentic self and how I can inspire confidence, AKA faith in other individuals to believe in who God says they are, not what the world says about them. So today I'm recording this. It is Labor Day. It is a break from work for some people. Others are working today. But for me, I just want to encourage others because I'm starting to realize more and more as I age and mature that I've spent a lot of my life in a box. And it was a box I didn't even build. It was a cage that others set up that I walked in and I let the door shut behind me. And now I was trying, I'm trying to figure out how to get out. But the key is having faith and trusting God that whatever is for you is for you. You don't have to be confined by anyone's box. Guess what? They may have shut the door, but God's got the key to free you. He's got the key to free you so that you can walk in your authentic and true purpose. There is a purpose for your life. Don't ever let anyone make you think that there isn't. Just because they don't understand it doesn't mean that it's not meant for you. And everything that we do in this life, they, we have the Holy Spirit to guide us. And I do believe that God sometimes sends people along our path to help us, to help us on this journey, on this thing called life, to help us make it when we may not be as clear about what we should be doing, or how we should be doing it. I think he does allow other people to help us on our journey. That being said, we have to take the shackles off. We have to say, you know what? This isn't working for me. I may have been trained by that electric fence, but you know what? There's an opening over there. That fence stops on the left side of the house. But because I kept getting shocked at the front, I never tried the left. Some of us just have to try a different exit. And once we get free, not allowing ourselves to be caged again, never letting ourselves be confined to what others think about us, but allowing our lives to be refined by the limelight that has been put in us, AKA the Holy Spirit, our gifts, our talents, and letting it shine through because you never know who needs you to show up as yourself. So I just hope and pray that you all will be encouraged, that you will have a wonderful and blessed week, and that you will just keep on keeping on because that's what keeps us going. That is what allows us to wake up every day and say, I am here. Because our eyes open, that means we have another day to get it right. We have another day to walk into our purpose. We have another day to achieve our dreams. And so for me, this is a dream to be able to do things like this, to be able to come on here and encourage individuals, whoever this message is for. It may not be for everyone, but it may be for someone. For those someones that need to hear this message, I hope that it resonates with your spirit. I hope that it blesses you, that it encourages you, and that it sets you on a path to becoming the woman or the man that God has called you to be. Until next time, keep on keeping on. Thank you for tuning in to another live taping of the Confidence Restored podcast by CC America. We are grateful that you tune in week after week and join us for testimonies of faith, inspiration, and transformation. Please be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe and let others know that you are listening to the Confidence Restored podcast. You can also now buy us a coffee to show appreciation at buymeacoffee.com forward slash CC America. Until next time, be blessed.